You're listening to Ask the Expert on Sprott Money News. Welcome back to Sprott Money News and SprottMoney.com. This is your Ask the Expert segment, the first one for 2020, as it is January 2020. I'm your host, Craig Hemke, and our first guest this year is Gerald Salenti. Gerald, many of you are probably familiar with him already, but he runs the Trends Research Institute. He is the publisher of the Trends Journal, and all of that can be found at trendsresearch.com. And it is a great pleasure to have him in for Ask the Expert. Gerald, thank you so much for your time. Ah, thanks for having me on. It is great to, to have you in, and we've got some great questions for you. Before we get started, I want to remind everybody, obviously you're finding this this podcast at the Sprott Money website. There's all sorts of great information here at the Sprott Money website, blog entries. We have our weekly wrap-ups that we record with Eric Sprott every Friday. Uh, but also, uh, check out the deals that we always have for bullion, bullion coins, and bullion storage. We're quick, quickly approaching the Chinese New Year, so you'll find some great opportunities if you want to look at Year of the Rat Gold Bars or even Gold and Silver Dragon Coins, of course. So please check out the Deals tab at SprottMoney.com for all the latest. Uh, Gerald, it's going to be great fun to run these questions past you. I've got seven of them. If you're ready, should we get started? Let's go for it. All right. The first one deals specifically with Gold and Silver. And uh, so let's just dive right in. Specifically, what are your forecasts for gold and silver here in 2020? And then as an aside, uh, given your trends, research, and forecasting, how important do you feel offshore storage can be for precious metals? Well, on the, on the gold and, and silver line, we're bullish on it. You know, back in June of 2019, we sent the Trends Journal subscribers a trend alert, and it was gold bull run has begun and gold was at one thousand three hundred and thirty two dollars an ounce we saw after the uh, iranians retaliated and bombed those uh, sites those military sites in iraq that housed u.s soldiers that gold briefly spiked to sixteen hundred and ten dollars so this is just the beginning of it uh Gold is the ultimate safe haven, and the world is not that safe anymore. One of our top trends for 2020 is the talking about the new world disorder. Beyond Iran, look what's going on in Iraq. Afghan war still going on. Yemen, Syria, Libya. Oh, Libya is wonderful right now, isn't Mm. it? How about those revolts going down there in Chile, Bolivia, Colombia, Ecuador, Peru? Oh, Hong Kong. Forgot about Hong Kong. Oh, how about the longest strike, transportation strike in France going on for weeks. How about in Lebanon? Oh, yeah, the people are taking to the streets against the government. Oh, Algeria, yeah, it's about 45 weeks now. Every weekend the people are going out. Zimbabwe, South Africa. I've, in, this is my 40th year of doing trend forecasting. I've never seen it like this before. So gold is the ultimate safe haven asset. As I see it, silver follows. And how about offshore? Why would anybody trust their government not to do anything they can to take as much from you that you have that they could steal? So that's my answer to that, because that's what they'll do. Yeah. Do you have a specific offshore location? I don't know. This is just your personal opinion. Do you have any place you prefer? No, I, I wouldn't. I I can't give those kind of recommendations out. So because I'm then I'm then I'm I'm not a, a uh, an analyst in that sure. field and don't want to be prosecuted by the uh, people that want to shut me up for saying something like that. <laughs> I understand where you're coming from, my friend. No doubt about it. All right. Well, nonetheless, keeping some offshore in a safe jurisdiction because you never know how things are going to play out. Always a good idea. To that end, that leads us right to question number two. How about that? Um, one of the I don't know if you probably say your mantra is too strong of a term, but you often talk about having golds, guns, gold, and a getaway plan. Um, you know, a lot of Sprott Money customers and a lot of our listeners are Canadian. Can't you know they have a little trouble getting guns up there, right? Um, gold not so easy either sometimes, and then certainly the government doesn't own any gold anymore. So for Canadians specifically. Uh, in the next crisis, this new world disorder. Do you have any specific advice uh, for them? Yeah, again, they could they'll, they'll, they'll steal your gold. And look what they did in America, 1933. 
holiday. Yeah. We're going to have a bank holiday. Isn't that a nice propaganda word to use, a holiday? Well, you're not going to be able to get your money, and if you don't give us your gold, you're going to go to jail. They'll so, do anything they want at any time, anywhere, any place. And if war breaks out, if, if, if there's a terror strike or whatever that hits Canada, they'll crack down and clamp down like everywhere else. And the people will buy into it initially because they'll use the propaganda and hate to get the people fearful. So, yeah, you, and, and again, what would happen? What would happen if, if war continues to escalate? And, and all of a sudden, there are cyber attacks. There, there's, there's biological warfare. There's a nuclear plant that blows up. So it's always good to me in that prepare for the worst. Mm -hmm. If the worst doesn't happen, it didn't cost you anything. If you don't prepare for the worst and the worst does happen, you can lose everything. Yeah, yeah, I, I, that's what I always feel like too, Gerald. I, you, I just think of what a dope I'd feel like if I knew all this stuff and I knew it was a possibility and then I didn't prepare for it. Exactly. So you can see what's going on around the world. Again, we put out our top trends this year. Look at all the com countries I just mentioned to you. Look at what's going on. I haven't seen anything like this. And, and, and then here's very, very important, very important. All of these movements, you know who's their leader? The people. All independent movements, no one person leading them. That shows you, or shows us, the element of disdain that the common people have for the ruling governments. So it's going to be the people against the governments. I don't care if it's Canada. I don't care if it's Zimbabwe. I don't care if it's Cameroon. Yeah. It's the people against the governments. Because all the governments are only interested in are the special interests. End of story, period, paragraph. Yeah. You, I, I'm going to steal this. I, I think you can tell I already like it. This new world disorder. I'm going to be using that a lot myself in the days to come. Um, I, I want to, it kind of leads us into question three, though. And you've talked about this now. Um, I mean, what's going on around the planet and, and the uh, threats of war, rumors of war, whatever, in the Middle East. Question three deals with that specifically. The Middle East tensions are certainly spiking. Uh, what do you expect? What does your research expect uh, or tell you to expect in geopolitically here in 2020? We have been forecasting in the Trends Journal going back to 2016, and you could hear me on numerous, numerous broadcasts and podcasts warning about the Israeli-Saudi-U.S. alliance aimed at bringing down Iran. This, to us, is serious. I believe... The first shots of World War III have been fired. Iran isn't Libya. It's not Syria. It's not Iraq. It's not Yemen. These are the Persians. They've been around a long time. They're not going anywhere. The hatred that Americans are selling against them is nonstop. And if we don't stop it, it's only going to get much worse. And so as I see it now, we have to be prepared for this escalating and getting much worse. It's not only Iran, it's the entire Middle East. Let's go back to gold. Look again what happened when Iran retaliated. Gold prices spiked to six, $1,610 an ounce. I'm very concerned about the Middle East. And that to me is the flashpoint. Because also, if war breaks out, again, you saw oil prices when that happened, spike 5%. If oil prices start hitting the 85, 90, 100 dollar barrel for Brent crude, kiss the global economies and the equity markets goodbye. Because the equity markets have just been propped up as everybody knows that listens to your podcasts with just fake money, backed by nothing and printed on nothing. What did, what did, what did the uh, Fed the, the, the feds have pumped in almost $6 trillion since September 17th into the overnight repo, repo markets. So this whole thing is, is a house of cards. And I'm very concerned that the Middle East can be the flashpoint, that this could be the beginning of World War III. And as Einstein said when they asked him, what weapons will be used to fight World War III? He said, I don't know. But I do know that they'll be using sticks and stones to fight World War IV. Yeah. 
All right, if we shift gears a little bit into question number four, we're going to get back to something specific uh, to Canada, because obviously we got a lot of Canadian listeners and Sprott Money is a Canadian-based company. Uh, what steps do you think the Canadian government could take to revitalize the Canadian economy? What they have to do is, is, um, is cut back on spending and produce more. And right now, Canada is very reliant on oil. And when you look at oil prices, you know, they, they, they're, they spiked for a little bit. But, you know, they were still only in, the, for Brent crude, still in the only mid $60 a barrel. And because Canada's economy grew so fast and the real estate market has really burgeoned to the level that it has, right now, to, to, as we see it, this is a time to solidify. This is a time not to keep pushing more growth, but to be solid on what you have now and keep bringing down corp, uh, government debt. The other thing is that the government should be doing more for the entrepreneurs rather than the bigs, and they do the opposite. So if I want to build a big development in Toronto, I'll get all this free land, and I'm going to tell you that I'm going to create jobs, and I'm going to get a lot of tax breaks to do it, and we're going to, and they keep selling this BS. My master's degree, by the way, was in public administration going back to 1970 when it was a brand new course. And all of this stuff started around that time with governments selling their BS that by us giving big tax breaks and benefits to the bigs, we all could benefit from it. But the money's going to the 1%. So if the Canadian government wants to start doing something, they should start putting more antitrust legislation into place. What they need to do is you have to start spreading the wealth more. So if you have more shops, more businesses that are owned by more entrepreneurs, then you have more middle-class jobs. Look, once upon a time when I was a young man, they had things called stationary stores. They had things called hardware stores before the Lowe's and the Home Depots and the Staples took over those fields. They used to have a thing called, oh, this is going to shock people, drug stores <laughs> before CVS, before Walgreens, before Boots, that now Walgreens owns, took over. So when you concentrate the wealth in the hands of the few, the money doesn't trickle down. The only, you know what trickles down. So what they need to do is to put back into place antitrust legislation that's let the people become middle-class entrepreneurs that's been taken away from them. Yep, yep. All right, moving on to question five. You had kind of briefly touched upon this earlier too. Uh, what is your opinion regarding the possible return of precious metal confiscation by governments? Absolutely they'll do it. Look, confiscate gold? That's nothing. That's nothing. I'll kill anybody I want around the world because I don't like them. I don't like that guy, Gaddafi. I want him out of there. I don't want that guy who's saying, I want him out of there. That guy is sad. He got to go. Hey, that guy Soleimani, let's assassinate him. You, what do you think? That's nothing. Stealing gold from the people's chump change for governments. They'll do anything they want, anywhere, any way, anyhow, to, to get what they want when they want it. So anybody to me that would trust the government to be respectful of their individual rights and their human rights, it better start growing up. I think uh, that's some wise advice. You make an excellent point. Um, all right, we've got two questions to go, my friend. And uh, so we are rounding the far turn and we are headed for home in the home stretch. First one has to do with cycle research. And just kind of the larger cycles that are out there. Uh, do you uh, have you read much of Strauss and Howe and their theories regarding the fourth turning, or at least uh, generational long-term cycles? What do you? How do you study these things? Yeah, I really don't uh, know much about them. I look at the current events forming future trends. The cycles may be perfectly in place, but I just look at what's going on, what it means, and where it's going. So when you get the news from the from the mainstream media. And I call them prostitutes because they get paid to put out by their, their, their government whoremasters and corporate pimps. All you get is this is what's going on, and that's propagandized. What we do in the Trends Journal is we look at what's going on, the truth of the matter, only based on the facts, what it means and where it's going. 
So that's the way we do it. So the where it's going may be the 80 cycle, 80 year cycle, because in in 20, 30 in in um, in for 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 2021, we're forecasting the greatest depression. And we're saying that what's going to to hold it back this year is particularly the United States, because they're going to start lowering interest rates to zero to negative percent. And Canada also has room to lower their interest rates. So that is what we're concerned about. They're going to get through this year. So the cycle may be right on time. And so the fourth turning may be turning. All right, my friend, last question for you. Kind of gets back to economics and uh, the world economy, global economy, monetary system, that stuff. Specific to the dollar. What do your forecasts suggest for the long-term viability of the U.S. dollar? Specifically, how long do you think the dollar, dollar will remain the sole reserve currency? The dollar will remain the sole reserve currency as long as commodities are based in dollars, particularly petrodollars. And when that ends, then you'll see the death of the dollar, just like you saw the death of the British pound when it was still the sun never set on the British Empire, and it started to decline. What's holding the dollar up is the weakness of the other current major currencies around the world with their negative and zero interest rate policy. So as long as the global economy stays weak, the dollar will stay strong. However... If the United States launches war, and it's a real one, the dollar won't be the reserve currency. You saw it go down again when Iran launched the counteroffensive, or counterattack, I should say, after the United States killed Soleimani. In response, they bombed the Iraqi military bases that housed American soldiers. And by the way, they warned American government they were going to do that that's why no one was there were no casualties but you saw the dollar decline so the dollars being only held up because of the weakness of the other currencies but as the dollar starts going down when they lower interest rates to which i believe by next no by this coming november we're going to see negative to zero interest rate policy in the united states then the weakness of the dollar will continue to show through but again Look at the debt levels globally. I and mean, what does China have? $40 trillion worth of debt. And it keeps building. So the yuan, how much stronger is it going to be? And then when there's a crisis going on, you're going to see it going down. It's certainly not going to be the, the Indian rupee. You know, that's not going to make it. What other currencies are there that could, it's not going to be the euro with their negative, what, minus 0.5% interest rates. And now you're looking at growth in in the biggest countries like Germany at 0.5% GDP. So the the dollar doesn't have a challenger yet. So until the dollar really has a challenger and or they take the dollar off the petrodollar and other commodities aren't dollar-based, that's going to be the decline of the dollar. In the meantime, to me, the sole reserve currency is really gold. Yep. It always tends to go back to that in the end. Uh, again, we've been speaking with Gerald Salenti. He is the publisher of Trends Journal at trendsresearch.com. Gerald, I'd be remiss if I didn't let you describe your work a little bit and tell everybody how they can find it. Yes, it's, we have the magazine, the Trends Journal magazine. And again, this is my 40th year of doing this. My books are Trend Tracking, Trends 2000, far better than Mega Trends, Time Magazine, on and on. Uh, but the Trends Journal is the only magazine in the world that tells you what's going on, what it means, and where it's going. And we only provide facts. The motto of the magazine is think for yourself. And that's what we put out there, information to help you think for yourself and to prepare, prepare for the future. And it's a subscription service, or how do we find it? Subscription, it's a digital subscriber. It's a, a weekly magazine. It's only $129 a year. Money back guaranteed after 30 days if you don't like it. You have nothing to lose and everything to gain. Gerald, thank you so much for your time. It's been fascinating. And I think everybody has benefited from listening. Well, thank you so much for having me on, and, and keep up the great work. It's a great website and podcast and all that you do for the people, so thank you. And one more thing, it is 2020, and that means it's almost tax season again. Time to start thinking about those RRSP and IRA accounts. 
Did you know that you can add precious metals to your registered investments? And you can do that at Sprott Money. So just diversify that RRSP this year. Diversify that IRA. Add some physical gold and silver from Sprott Money. Call us at 888-861-0775 or simply visit SprottMoney.com for more details. Thanks again to Gerald Salenti for his time. Hope you enjoyed Ask the Expert for January. Please be sure to check back in February for another edition of the series.